Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I thought that I had brought these uh, books up here before I made my drama video but I left them on the dining room table downstairs so I went downstairs to go get them. And as soon as I got up from the bed I realized, I was like, I don't feel very good. I hope I'm not coming down with something. I was like, my throat's kind of hurting, my stomach's hurting. I'm like, what is going on? Um, my husband wasn't feeling very good a couple days ago, but he feels much better now. So I'm like, am I getting sick? Like, I really haven't been around anybody, so I don't know. But um, I wanted to come on here and do a meditation today. So let's get into the meditations. I brought Melody Beatty, these books, with me today. So let's go and look at the language of letting go. Today is, I think it's the 28th. It's the 28th. Let's look at the language of letting go and uh, see what it is saying to us. See what the universe is speaking to us today through Melody Baby. February 28th. Letting go of denial. This will be interesting. Okay, you are slow to believe that which is believed, that which if believed would hurt our feelings, Ovid. Most of us in recovery have engaged in denial from time to time. Some of us relied on this tool. We may have denied events or feelings from our past. We may have denied other people's problems. We may have denied our own problems, feelings, thoughts, wants, or needs. We denied the truth. Denial means we didn't let ourselves face reality, usually because facing that particular reality would hurt. It would be a loss of something, trust, love, family, perhaps a marriage, a friendship, or a dream. And it hurts to lose something or someone. Denial is a protective device, a shock absorber for the soul. It prevents us from acknowledging reality until we feel prepared to cope with that particular reality. People can shout and scream the truth at us, but we will not see or hear it until we are ready. We are sturdy yet fragile beings. Sometimes we need time to get prepared, time to ready ourselves to cope. We do not need to let go of our need to deny by beating ourselves into acceptance. We let go of our need to deny by allowing ourselves to become safe and strong enough to cope with the, the truth. We will do this when the time is right. We do not need to punish ourselves for having denial or denied reality. We need only love ourselves into safety and strength so that each day we are better equipped to face and deal with the truth. We will face and deal with reality on our own time schedule when we are ready and in our higher powers timing. We do not have to accept chastisement from anyone, including ourselves, for this schedule. We will know what we need to do. We will know what we need to know when it's time to know it. Today I will concentrate on making myself feel safe and confident. Wow, this is a powerful uh, meditation. I love these two things where it says sometimes we need a time to get prepared. Um, time to ready ourselves to cope. We do not need to let go of our need to deny by beating ourselves into acceptance. We let go of our need to deny by allowing ourselves to become safe and strong enough to cope with the truth. And then it goes on here and talks about like accepting denial. We do not have to accept chastisement from anyone, including ourselves, for the schedule. We will know what we need to know when it's time to know it. I think that's such a powerful statement. You know, it's interesting to me when I think about denial, which is obviously a term that is so directly related to recovery. And, you know, when I first got sober, um, there's actually this fantastic, I don't know if the book still exists or not, but it was 30 years ago, 29 years ago, I saw this book and it was called Denial is Not a River in Egypt. And it was all of these like 12 step slogans because that's one of them, Denial is Not a River in Egypt. And, um, you know, there was so much talk when I first got sober, like in groups with people and whatever, this concept of denial, you know, that when people would say things like, well, I don't really think that I have a problem. The go-to was, well, you're in denial, right? Like you don't really know it is. But when I think back on like all the moments where, you know, I knew before I went into treatment the last time how bad it was. I probably knew how bad it was more than anybody that was affected by it, in all honesty. Like, I knew the hell that I was living on a daily basis. It wasn't that I was in denial, it was that I didn't want to accept that there was something else. I was afraid of what it looked like on the other side. I think fear was more powerful to me than denial. I think me acting as if, which might have been the denial, acting as if it wasn't really that big of a deal was because I was afraid to make changes because I didn't know what my life would look like without the substance, you know? T to much to that same degree is very similar how I feel about food today, you know, which is one of the things I've worked on with my food addiction, is I don't, I have this fear associated with it, well, what if I can't just have this, like, you know, comfort meal and I can't do this, and that's where my head goes to, even if that's not realistic, right? But I can remember, like, 
people sitting in groups and like, you know, the counselors saying things to them like, well, this is, no, that's not that big of a deal, blah, blah, blah. And I can remember even saying, you know, at one point being questioned on like my marijuana use and I was like, everybody around me smokes as much as I smoke, you know? And the truth was that everybody around me smoked as much as I did. But I also knew that people that weren't around me and so that was my reality of what I was living in. I, but that was an excuse I was using, right? Like, I was fully aware that, you know, people that were functioning in society were not sitting around smoking weed all day long. I mean, I was very aware, even in the depths of my addiction, that there were people my own age that were getting straight A's in college or working 40 to 60 hour week jobs. <clears throat> or were going to technical schools or were serving in the military that weren't sitting around getting high all day long. I knew that, right? But the denial was in the fear of stopping. And so the fear of stopping was me coming up with excuses of saying, well, everybody around me smokes weed. Well, everybody around me did smoke weed that way. That didn't make it okay, you know? I think what's interesting as I've gotten older, I don't know that I, well, older in sobriety and older in life, but I don't know that I necessarily struggled with denial um, in that situation. And maybe it's because I have been so programmed in it, since I got sober to all, and from a very young age to always look at the truth, right? Like it doesn't necessarily mean you, you sing it out to the masses, but like that you know the truth, you live out loud. Like that's one of the things that I've always been like told in recovery is to live out loud, share your story, share what's going on with you. Not just your story of your life, but like share what's going on with you. Like, you know, um, and that's what I've always done. And that's really helped me stay where I'm at today. Like, I can remember for like the four years that I wasn't going to meetings, you know, I've met a lot of people that have walked away from 12-step programs that were still sober and they just weren't going to meetings. They weren't working 12-step programs. I know a lot of those people. And the things they'll say is, I don't need those meetings. Those meetings don't help. Well, they, they helped you for a while. You know, I don't, I'm not saying that a 12-step program is the ultimate, but they're not doing any. They went from doing everything to nothing, right? And they'll say things like, you know, I've outgrown them. I don't need them anymore. I don't do this. I mean, I never said that in the four years that I didn't go to meetings. I always said, I know I need to go to a meeting. I'm scared to go back to the meetings. You know, I would say that to Tanya. You know, I would say that to my sponsor when he would call me, my sponsor at the time that's since passed. Um, I knew in my head I needed to be back going to meetings. I knew that. I was terrified to walk back in. Um, I think that one of the things that has really saved my ass and gotten me to 29 years sober is the fact that I really haven't lived in denial a lot of my life, you know? And the denial that I have lived in, I, in all honesty, like, I think to some degree, denials and awareness are so closely, like, pinned for me. I have a hard time, like, looking at a situation and, and living in denial. Like, I do. Like, in past relationships, when they were bad, I knew they were bad. I knew that they weren't getting better. I knew the denial was almost like a false sense of denial. It was like living the charade of every day we're okay when I knew I wasn't okay and he knew he was we weren't okay. And so the denial from those past relationships had to have existed in how we were living our life as if it was okay until one day the dam just broke and we weren't okay anymore. That was where the denial existed. The denial existed in our acting as if, acting as if everything was okay. That was where the denial was. But if you had put the golden lasso of truth around me and said, what do you think is the condition of your relationship? I'd say it's shit. We're nowhere, you know? I love him. I love him as a person. I want good things for him. And I know he wants the same thing for me, but no, we're not in love anymore and this relationship's not going anywhere. It's just who's gonna make the first move and get out. And that's the truth, you know, with both of my past relationships. I think that's where the denial has lived for me. In all honesty, one of the things I think has been so hard for me through the years is that I do live in the truth. You know, and I take those things to my sponsor. Now I take those things to my therapist. I take those things to my best friend or to my husband. I'm like, I can't look past this. I can't get past this feeling, you know? I mean, I think sometimes I wish maybe I did live in denial a little bit. I don't really know people like, you know, I've met people that, you know, it's interesting because I was watching this interview. This is completely going to sound so strange. But I was doing this, you know, doing some true crime on my drama channel. And I was watching this, like, interview with this wife of the serial killer. It was the wife of her Baumeister. And I was watching this interview with her that came out. Like, I'd seen it several times. But 
she said something about like people always, you know, ask like, how did you not know and whatever. And she's like, you know, in retrospect, I think she said something like, or maybe it was another wife I was watching and in retrospect, you pick up on signs and things like that. Well, that's not necessarily denial at the time. You know, people will be like, well, they wanted to be in denial because they didn't see those things. You know, like <sighs> the, a lot of people in my life do a lot of things that are questionable. And I'm not talking about horrible. I'm just like, it doesn't make sense, right? You know, does that make them a serial killer? No, I don't think that's where your head goes to. Does that mean you're living in denial? No, you're not living in denial. We make excuses for those things because we love those people, you know? Have I made excuses for people in my life? Absolutely. Have people made excuses for me? Absolutely. Out of fear of losing them? Sure. Does that mean I'm in denial? I mean, I believe that denial is... Um, absolutely resistance to the truth as it's shown. That when somebody presents to you the truth, you're like, no, that's not the truth, right? Have I met people in treatment when I was in treatment back in the day and through the years of sobriety that you like show things to them about their use and how they've affected people and they're like, no, that's just not true? Yes, but I think each of us you know, I, I have somebody that said this years ago. We all know our own issues. I do believe that. I think we all know our own issues. So to me, denial is kind of a mask that we wear, you know? Every once in a while, like, I'll meet somebody that, like, they really don't get it. They just really don't. But I, I, like, for whatever the issue is, you know, like, I've had a lot of friends of mine that they'll come to me because they have family members or friends or spouses or whatever that have substance issues. And they'll be like, whatever. And, like, as I'm talking to them, I can just see it. It's like, they don't see it. But they don't want to see it at the time because if they see it, then it means I have to do something about it. And if I have to do something about it, that means change. And I'm scared to change, so I don't want to do something about it. Well, that goes back to fear. Fear is more relatable to me than denial. Denial is a mask that I feel like we wear when we're afraid of something. But I think most people, even those that act like they're in denial or seem to be in denial, and I'm not talking about like the wives of serial killers. I think they really didn't have any clue at the time. I don't think that was living in denial. I think their husbands, they just thought their husbands did some weird stuff and they just couldn't really make sense of it. Do I think their mind went to their serial killer and I'm denying it and pushing it down? No, I don't think so, you know? Um... I think they're probably out there, some of them, that did question it and, and wonder, but then they lied about it. Lying's different than denial, you know? And so I've always, like, struggled with this concept of denial, like, this resistance of the truth. Like, for me, I feel like that's a mask that you wear because you're afraid. Like, fear has always been a leading force with me. Fear, And it can be fear of losing a relationship, fear of whatever. It can be, you know, fear of change, fear of growth. You know, when I made my fear list for my inventories, I mean, fear of success and fear of, failure, fear of failure are both on there, you know? So denial, I don't know, is just a way that we mask that fear for me, I think. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. This was a good thought-provoking. Um, this is going to be one of those I take to Tanya tonight and I take to my sponsor and stuff like that when we talk about it afterwards. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.